Today I want to go into a little dive into the software on a PC with Windows 11 and then go into an Android phone and go over the app for the OBSBOT Tail Air. I've been using this camera for a little bit and it's super versatile, but there's a lot in the software to go over. So let's go check it out. My name is John Ryan and I'm from Coffee Talking Tech. And if you haven't seen my video of how to connect the OBSBOT in several different ways, I'll post it right here. I don't know everything in this. I've been using it for several weeks, but I know most of the stuff. Let's go check it out. All right, so we're into the software, the Windows software I'm on. I am on Windows 11, and right now I have this button pushed, which is the video preview, and this is this is exactly what you see of me. And right up here, this is saying number one, Tail Air, and you can add devices here and switch between your devices to make adjustments. And then here, this is gonna take you into some basic software settings, your recording bit rate, your video recording format. So you can pick between several different formats in here. And then you can also decide where you want those recordings to go to. These are your global hotkeys or your shortcuts and you can turn them on. And when you do, you can push right here also and turn them on. You can see that goes on and off. And then the same for your remote controller. It can be turned on right over here also in those settings. Um, you can have this start up when you start your windows and here are all your hotkeys right in here and this is ocs which is like i don't know really what this does so much but i think what it does is it brings in uh, the ability to bring in different music from touch pads and etc don't know everything that's in here. I know most of the stuff, but not this. So again, this is your video preview. This is your on and off power button. This turns on your remote. It tells you right here, global hotkeys. This is your virtual camera that you can take into many softwares. And this is the OSC. And when we go to console, this tells you which air you're, you're looking at, whether it's charged or not, your recording, this will take a snapshot when you push this down and this will record to the media file that you choose. This is your human tracking, slow, standard and fast. And then you have normal tracking mode, which right now we are tracking. And then if I was further away, this would zoom in for upper body. And since I am already closed up, this is the close up. And then I'm going to turn this off by just giving it a hand gesture. And right now it is not following me. Um, below is your animal tracking, your group. And this is your three presets that you can add wherever you want. And of course, this is your gimbal and your PTZ's control. And then you can zoom in down here. And then zoom back out. And this is your reset button. It helps reset the gimbal. So if I was off to the side or something, I'd hit reset and it brings me back. Your image is, you can choose to have HDR, which is supposed to be like a higher dynamic range. You'd have to fool around with this, see if you can get the look you want. Most of the time I'm noticing that it just looks better off. Here's your autofocus. So if you want to focus on something and just turn it off, you can. So now this will not focus on me. And then we'll turn on autofocus. And as I get closer, it focuses on me. And then you have auto exposure. You can turn this on or off. And you can have it on face or global. So that would give give more of a even disperse over the picture. I usually like to have all this off because I like to set my own shutter speed and my ISO. Here's anti flicker in case you're having a problem. There's your white balance and you have a bunch of presets to choose from auto daylight, depending on the lighting that you have and the conditions that you're in. Mine set to custom right now. And then you can also do the same thing with your brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and hue. So you can have this on standard. And then you can let the camera do everything. 
or choose outdoor, pastel, or your own custom setup, which is what I choose. And then you can go into beauty. Wow, beauty. I could be in here for hours. So when I click on this, it will change my face image. And you can see classic man. And then you can go to all the stuff that's in here as far as changing your tone of your skin, smoothing out your skin, clarify, slimming. Oh, that looks good. Slim me up. Narrow. As you can see, it does to my face. And then you can do different things with your eyes. Let's make your eyes big. And small. There we go. Your cheekbones. Whiten your teeth, look. <laughs> so you get the idea. And then there's some filters down at the bottom. Nature, fresh, clear, crystal. You can change the levels to how strong you want the filter to be black and white, and soda. So there's a lot to play in here if you want, and you can turn this retouch off and just be the normal you. Then you have background blur. If you're gonna use this, you have to have a pretty powerful computer and a GPU. It will suck up a lot of power if you don't and you leave this on. So you generally wouldn't use this, but it's there if you need it. And then you go to the more, which is a lot of stuff more in here. Device power on and off. You can have it do whatever you choose to have it do. Um, this is UVC mode. This is when you plug your Osbot in USB. This has to be turned on. Otherwise, it will not work. And then you will activate your NDI license here. This will turn NDI mode on. This is RSTP mode. You turn it on here. Your media settings are in here. So you pick your frame rate, 24, 25, 30, the usual suspects. And then you can pick your encoder. It does have H.265 also, and you pick your bit rate and your resolution, 4K, 1080. You could do the same with your NDI, your recording, your HDMI out. You can do the same thing with setting the resolutions. Here are your gesture controls. You can turn them on and off, and then you can set your zoom factor in. So you can control when you give the zoom gesture, how far you want it to zoom in. So that's pretty cool that you can make that adjustment. And here's your dynamic zoom also. This is your audio. You can have the regular audio coming in, or you can actually turn that off. And when you plug into the 3.5 millimeter jack, then it will pick up the wireless audio that you, that you have. Automatic gain control, mirror image, which will flip you from one side to the other. Your general settings in here, which is power on shooting. If, actually, I don't know what the power on shooting does exactly. Here's your buzzer. It indicates like when you turn it on and off, it will make a little buzz. Indicator status, your brightness of your LED lights on the Ozbot. Plug and play, power off and on. SD card management, you format your card here, and then you can break up the segments of the video for what size you want them to be. You can reset all your connections here. You can restore factory. You can give feedback. This will tell you about your Ozbot, which one you have, your serial number, etc. 
your Wi-Fi address, your Bluetooth, and this is where you would pick up your RTSP information right here and input it. This would be your export log, and this tells you your firmware right here, and you have an upgrade guide to show you how to do the firmware, and then you could do a manual upgrade right in here also. So that is all the software that we're pretty much looking at. It was just to go over the majority of everything, which we pretty much did. And you can see how great the software is and how usable and friendly it is. And now let's go into the app and we're going to get into this app and go over it. Let's start up with the home button. You see that this disconnects your phone from the app. So we'll hit cancel. And then we're going to go right into the next thing, which is the director's grid. Whatever I push will go out to the on air. So it would turn green, the one that I'm choosing, and then it goes out to the air on air. And so that's as simple as that does. And also all your P1, P2, and P3 would be added in there too. And this way you can go in between all that. Um, then this is your camera settings. We're going to hit the camera settings. We're in manual mode right now. Let's see what it would look like if we had it in auto. So it's working on my face. There we go. And usually the auto settings are pretty good. So you have to admit that that looks pretty good with the auto settings where it is. But I like to have my manual settings this way. My shutter speed's adjusted and it, it looks the best like this for video. And this is what I'm choosing and it looks, looks really good. And you can see that you can choose your auto focus center. Um, and then you can choose manual focus and then you can pick a focus spot too. And so we'll get, we're going to keep this on center spot and we can flip the image right here by pushing the bottom flip right there. This puts the grid up. So if you want your, you know, spacing to be even this helps you with centering everything and that's your hdr you can have on or not have on we went through that and here is your uh, auto exposure so you would just tap on an area where you want to work on your auto exposure and it will set to that and then over to your right you have your custom settings for your sharpness contrast saturation hue and brightness and all of these are adjustable and then you can also go to a couple presets that are here same as in the pc software and then you can go in and adjust your white balance to custom also which is what I have personally. All right, let's X out of that. And then below this is gonna be your album. So wherever you, whatever you're recording, it would go into here. Go from the SD card. This is gonna be more settings, which is where your gesture control is. It's showing your, you, what your wireless network is, your camera, and whether autofocus is on. This is where all these settings are if you wanna turn UVC mode if you're using USB, your NDI. These are all the settings that are exactly in the PC settings also. So if I was to hit my object tracking, the, oh, okay, that's the composition lines. Here, we picking AI wide. You can choose AI wide or AI auto. So if you wanted to crop in your image. Also, I just wanted to point out up here in the right hand corner, you can move this anywhere you please. And the great thing is it shows the audio and that you're getting audio and you can move this out of the way if it is in your way. So that's really neat. And let's go back to our AI settings. This is for object tracking. So this is where you would come and make a box on your face and then you can move it. It will move wherever you want. And then you would double tap and then it would lock back in. Or if you wanted to object track, it'd be just make a box around the object and then it would follow. And then you just would double tap to get rid of it. And then we can put it right back on my face. And then 
if you wanted to, you just double tap to stop that. And that's your object tracking. Here is where you control your PTZ gimbal. And so you can go up and down, right and left. And then if you want to recenter, you could just hit this bottom dot and it helps you recenter the gimbal. And then you push the gimbal button again and it gets rid of the gimbal on the screen. This is how you would crop in right here. And this will, you can adjust how much you want the crop to be. So you can zoom in, you can zoom back out. And here's where you control how fast you want the follow of the tracking to be. And there's our AI tracking. Boom. We just turned it on by double tapping on me. And now basically, I'm being followed. I'm being followed. And then we just double tap on me to turn the AI tracking off. And then the exposure comes on sometimes too when you tap like that too, but that's no big deal. And then the P1, P2, P3 is the same with the presets. And that's pretty much everything except over here, when you hold this button down, then we go into where you would put your RTMP settings for YouTube, Facebook, Twitch or whatever else you're going to do, or you could record to your SD card and it shows you how much is used and how many photos and how much time you would get at that specific settings. You can hit the media settings on the top and that will adjust what, how you want to stream and what you're going out in the stream. This is how you can access your media settings from here also if you need to make a change. And then also if you're going to be streaming, you can go and change if you want to go out at 1080p or 4k and what's really great is you can go and just change your bit rate of your stream and that's really super useful and great to see and you can have this record while you're streaming and you would just hit start your set your rtmp settings and it's pretty much it's pretty much as easy as that and then um the bottom right below where it says hold if i do hit that that is going to be says the current sd card can run 58 minutes gives you an idea and then right below in here it says record and if you hit that it starts recording and it's showing up in the corner right here that it's recording and for how long and then you would just hit this button to stop the recording. It's a lot of the settings, mostly the settings that you would have in the PC application and the PC software, but there are a few other things in here, a little bit more adjustable, but this is uh, forever changing and being updated to be better also.